You two, what the crap's going on? Air Carthage here. Alexander Here's the next Alexander historical battle. Enjoy. And to prepare for the trials which lay ahead. The Armenian was sent with a strong contingent of cavalry to patrol the coast and harry the Persian navy whenever they came ashore. Another officer, Ptolemy, was ordered to return home and gather reinforcements. Alexander then continued his march, accepting the surrender of several towns along his route before turning north for Gordium. Here he was rejoined in the spring of 333 BC by Parmenian and Ptolemy with their reinforcements. Gordium was home to the fabled Gordian Knot, a knot so fiendishly complex that no man could untie it. In typical style, Alexander slashed it with his sword, declaring that it did not matter how the knot was undone, only that it was. Resuming his advance, and after a failed Persian attempt to halt him at the mountain entrance, known as the Cilician Gates, Alexander took the city of Tarsus. Here the Macedonian advance was delayed as Alexander fell ill with a fever. Encouraged by this apparent sign of weakness, the Persian king Darius gathered a great army of some 600,000 men and prepared to march in pursuit. Alexander recovered and continued his march along the coast whilst Darius travelled through the mountains to appear unexpectedly at the Macedonians' rear, cutting their lines. Far from being intimidated, as anticipated, Alexander turned and force marched to face the Persians. His comparatively small force came upon the vast Persian army on the banks of the Pinarus, on the cramped ground between the mountains and the sea. Darius's advantage of surprise had been lost, and the Macedonian swift march had caught the Persians in a place where they would struggle to properly deploy their huge army. Even so, the mismatch in numbers made the prospect of defeat for the Macedonian king almost certain. Alright, so now they'll get into the battle itself. Give you some background. South of Isis. With the Persians in his rear, Alexander faces a seemingly impossible task. The Persian king Darius has taken the field, having lost so many of his generals in the Granicus defeat. He leads a huge army, drawn from all over his vast kingdom, that greatly outnumbers the invaders. Amongst them are the Immortals, infantry armed with both spear and bow. There are also units of heavy cavalry from Bactria, mercenary Greek heavy infantry, and bowmen from Mardia. Crossing the shallow waters, the Pinarus, in the face of the Persian army, seems an impossibility. But Alexander is a shrewd commander. The Persians will find it hard to outflank his small force on this narrow battlefield. And the keystone of their morale is their king. The opportunity to break Darius and his vast army is too tempting for a man of Alexander's heroic temperament. All right, so now that all of this explanation is over, we can actually get into the battle proper. I am actually commentating this after I've already played it, so that, that way maybe I could focus on what I was doing a little better than if I was talking and trying to play, which never seems to go too well for me. So yeah, anyway. So the way I like to beat this battle, and you'll see how I do it. First of all, I'm going to deal with the, the Persians who are on my side of the river, which is just a bunch of slingers. And uh, they die pretty easy to cavalry, obviously. So I just send all of my cab units over to mop them up. And then I start to gather my infantry on the right 
left-hand side of the river crossing. And uh, in the description, you heard him say a few times that Darius kept trying to get in the rear, which is pretty weird. Seems a little bit suspect. Hey, you all are always making jokes whenever I say that, so I figure I would get um, to get my chance to, to make fun of the narrator for that. In any case, uh, no, so uh, yeah, we're, we're killing the Persians that were trying to get to a rear, and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. All right, so uh, he said in the uh, description that crossing the uh, river in the face of the Persian army seems like an impossibility, and that's because in this scenario it is. Um, you shouldn't do it. And if you win by doing it, then that's impressive. You should send me a screenshot. Um, so <laughs> there's a different way that I like to go about it. I will show you all that here in just a moment. I'm just letting my horsemen rest to make sure that they're fresh. And then what I'm going to do is uh, use my Cretan archers, and I'm going to spread them out thin so that hopefully slow down their, their death rate. You don't have enough archers to face off with all the enemy Mardian archers, and the Cretan archers do not outrange the Mardian archers. I guess that the long beard of the Mardians, which you may have seen in the intro, gives them uh, extra bow range because they can just pull off uh, beard hairs and continually replace their uh, bow strings. So I guess it gives them some type of special advantage. And because of all the uh, greasy food that's been building up in their beard, I'm sure that it gives them uh, some special flex and stretch abilities for those bowstrings. Now, anyway, whatever, I'm just making crap up at this point. So I take all my cavalry, and I'm just going to punch through these uh, cardicays right there, which is some kind of trashy spearmen. Um, it seems pretty counterintuitive to take cav into spearmen, and it is. So not something I recommend. And then you're going to see me turn and face these guys, because as soon as you go pound into the cardicays, the uh, heavy Bactrian horse is going to come across from the uh, Persian right flank. You can see them actually moving across the river right there. And so basically I'm going to do a good old-fashioned pull-through here, which in Rome 1 is a little a little bit punishing, but since the Cardicates are spread thin, we can do it fairly easy. And we're going to destroy all these Mardian archers. And then we'll just swing back around and uh, pay our next visit to the Persians once we've destroyed the archers. And again, you can see the Bactrian cav crossing on the left hand of the screen. So that's why I moved my infantry to face a different direction. And now that all those uh, archers are dead, I'm going to take this cab, I'm going to swing around, and we're going to go uh, go pay old Darius a visit. Um, he is right now uh, in a chariot, like some type of chariot archer unit, which will uh, skirmish away from you for the most part. But you can catch him if you just chase him to the edge of the map. It's not too bad. So yeah, now those Cardicades are going to come across the, the river. So this is just something that if the AI actually held its ground on that side of the river, You'd probably have to just punch through a single piece of them and um, start to pull a flanking maneuver. But really, what I want to do is kill Darius early on here to get the morale penalty to the Persian army. At least they said there sounded like there'd be a morale penalty, and I was kind of mad there because that allied cab routed, but it might come back. So I decided to take this uh, Thessalian cab, and I'm going to bring it back and destroy those archers. I don't want them to come and shoot my uh, uh, Phalangist and Hypaspus in the flank. So one thing I've learned in this game is that Hypaspus are spearmen, and it seems like they'd be really good against cavalry, though I found they're not generally that good against heavy cavalry, unless they're being used in a support role, like throwing them into the fight after the charge has already taken place, because it seems like they get destroyed on the charge. Uh, typically, it seems best to just use your phalangist uh, on the charge. Yeah, so I did engage the Cardicades with my um, Hypaspus, because they should be able to handle those units. Uh, they really are bad spear units, if I remember right. And you can see that Bactrian cab kind of hunting around for an opportunity. The they will harass you. And uh, no I noticed when I was playing this that the enemy AI actually battle. knows when your uh, pike units are in phalanx belly. and when they aren't, which it should know that. And you can actually tempt them into attacking you um, by taking your men out of phalanx and then quickly putting them back in and dropping your spears. And there you can see that I actually did just kill the Darius. His men know their doom so that protests. should definitely uh, cause some morale drop in the, uh, the Persian forces, and my allied cab did come back. So yeah, you can still see the Bactrian cab still kind of just haunting around. Now it looks like it might try and go into the back of my men who are fighting the Cardicays. And right here I'm just going to get these pikemen um, and move them over to protect the back of this unit where that Bactrian cab is clearly headed. AI actually making a pretty good charge decision here trying to hit my guys who aren't facing them, and they definitely succeed in doing so, but immediately they pull back into my my phalanx behind them, and I'm able to start pouring in support, and the Bactrian cab will actually get cut down pretty bad right there. They don't do so well against the phalangist, um, unless they get a good, solid rear charge. Yeah, you can see I was just taking these units off the battlefield, making sure they didn't come back. 
going to bring my cab back over, and what I really need to do is sneak Alexander back across the river before all this infantry cuts off my, uh, my retreat with him. I don't have to have Alexander back across the river, but I'd like to have him there. You kind of have to be careful with them. I've played this battle before, wherever I charged into the back of, like, Cardicays or something, and Alexander would get killed with, like, 40 or 50 men left in the uh, unit. It's kind of stupid, but it happens, so... I, I do like using Alexander to kill pretty much everything, because his cab unit is awesome. But it is uh, also kind of risky, because you never know when he's going to get killed. See there, I just kind of snuck by those Greek mercenary infantry. And then right here, I'm having a little trouble getting my pikes down against the back green cabs. So a little trick in Rome 1 is sometimes you can push the backspace button and they'll drop their pikes again. So at this point, I've killed both back green heavy cav units. So now there's no substantial cav threat left from the uh, Persians, which is going to put me in a great position. This is exactly what I want to happen. So yep, at this point now, it's just a simple matter of mopping up all the remaining Persian forces. Now that I've kind of broken their defensive position, they'll actually come towards you. Which again is stupid. The AI should have never been programmed to come towards you since they have that um, that better position. And you would think that, you know, if time runs out that uh, your guys would lose since Alexander turned around and force march. Kind of seems like he'd be the attacker. But who knows. Yeah, at this point, the uh, Greek mercenary infantry is not very good. I took my phalanx units out of guard formation, which is that shield button down there. And the reason I do that is because in Rome 1, if you take them out of guard mode, they'll push forward. And th again, this is a feature that isn't in Rome 2, and it's one of the features that probably makes pikes a little bit more difficult to use because they don't get a good push against enemy units. They just kind of march up to them and stop as soon as they get into pike distance. Whereas here, you can see my pikes just kind of slowly um, pushing forward and pushing into the enemy units and killing them. So it works a lot better on Realm 1, the uh, the pike mechanics do. It's something that it'd be neat to see in Realm 2, though I don't know if the engine's really even capable of it. It's because they are two different engines, and it's kind of hard to say. But yeah, so there we go. Basically, just get to kill the, um, the Greek mercenary infantry piecemeal now, which is going to be a pretty simple business. Um, you can see that they kind of have like the zombie spear wall. Like you'd seen in Shogun 2, they're sitting there fighting to the death, even though they're free to flee, uh, which is kind of funny. Not sure why that happens, but apparently that's a bug that from Total War stuck around for a while because it made it all the way into Shogun 2. There they started fleeing. They must have thought they were still in combat with my men, so they were staying there. And over here, I'm going to try and pin those light spearmen and then bring Alexander around for a rear charge. And then all the while, I'm just using this... Um, at the Salian cab in the background, trying to get at those Mardian archers, uh, but the enemy spearmen keep chasing me. And you can see these Cardicays are going to give chase to Alexander, so I'm just going to let my Hypaspis intercept them from behind, and then I'll turn around and charge them now that they're really not in a good, good formation to take the charge. So there, they got hammered, and they rout. And like I said, it's just a simple matter of mopping up all remaining um, Phalanx units. I'm going to go after those Mardian archers, apparently. I do have to watch out because there are some immortals that are coming across the river. And they sound scary, but uh, if you haven't ever played this, um, you just see how my Cretan archers routed those Persian, or those Greek infantry over That's pretty pathetic. Um, yeah, so in this uh, in this game, they, they always talk like the immortals are really awesome. They're really just medium spearmen. They're not very good in the game. I don't know what they were like in real life. I've never really read about them, but they do have a bow. So it makes it an interestingly flexible unit. Like, they are a bow unit, a medium spear combined with bow. They're not like a really long range bow, but they are a bow unit. And so it's it's definitely an interesting unit. You don't, you don't really see that in Total War very often, a spear unit combined with a bow. I think you had forced or war bands, and in Rome too, you got a, a couple of the Persian bowmen carry spears, and I think the Cambri bow women carry spears. But uh, none of them were probably quite as good in melee combat as the Immortals were. They were truly kind of like a dual-purpose unit. But uh, that means that since they were good at a couple of things, uh, it's kind of like Jack of All Trades and Master of None. So the Immortals were not very good. Uh, usually if you were ever going to play this game online, which some people did, and it, was, it wasn't too bad. It's just obviously it's a very limited faction availability. If you play online, it's, like, it's pretty much like um, Macedon and... Uh, Persia, <laughs> and I think you can pick like the Gatay or something. I don't know what other factions are on. Oh, the Indians. Uh, there is an Indian faction that you can play as, which is pretty interesting. They have some longbowmen and chariots and elephants. Some cool units for sure. But yeah. Anyway, just gonna finish off all these uh, units. There's a unit of Cardicays and a Greek uh, Persian or a Greek mercenary infantry that's chasing around Alexander. Of course, I'm not gonna let him get to him. 
then you can just, again, see me finishing off other units here and then chasing down routing units to make sure they don't come back. It's pretty pretty simple once you once you make the initial breakthrough and kill... Um, did I say Darius? Was it Darius or is it Xerxes? I always get them confused. I don't know. So if I said the wrong king, my bad. Um, I should have been paying attention, I guess, when the guy was talking, but I wasn't. I had the uh, microphone muted and I was looking at something else. Um, yeah, I, I've just never really got big into Alexandrian history. Um, I don't know why. It just it hasn't been a particular interest to me. Obviously, he was a skilled commander, and uh, he had interesting tactics, but I just haven't spent a lot of time reading about it. I'm more familiar with the Punic Wars, and even those are just more of an amateur thing for me. It's not like I'm going to sit around studying them in great depth or going to the library and digging out uh, uncovered works from the past. Just, again, more of an amateur thing. I like the games. Uh, I definitely like some of the history behind the games, but clearly the, the games are a lot of fun. Yeah, so at this point all the Persian units are routing, but there's a couple of them that are fighting to the death, so I have to wait until they're uh, dead before the battle will officially end, or until they actually flee. So, this one was a, actually a pretty huge victory for me. We, we killed the Persian forces without uh, losing a single unit, which is pretty good. So it's going to be a heroic victory. We, we killed uh, 1,900 Persians. And if you look at the overall, Alexander did a whole bunch of killing, of course, and then Thessaly and Cav mopped up a bunch of units. Phelan just doing very well. Agriani and Axe, or Javelin Men, are terrible in this game. <laughs> They're just terrible. I'm surprised they got 11 kills, to be honest. Um, anyway, hope y'all enjoyed it. Air of Carthage signing off.